All right, so this is gonna be a full how to install the Barnes four wheel drive truss on a pre 2005 Ford Dana 60. This Dana 60 is an out of a 2004, but it should be the same all the way down to mid 90s, mid to late 90s, something like that. So it's gonna be a full how to video. And I'm gonna go buy the Barnes four wheel drive instructions. So let's get going. All right. So, before anybody says anything, I do have the gears in it. I do have seals in it. I'm gonna leave all that stuff in it for right now. All the seals will be replaced, and I am gonna weld everything in with the gears and seals and all that stuff in there. I'll put the cover back on it, but I don't wanna fool with anything inside here yet, so I'm just gonna leave it all in there and replace the seals later on. So, that being said, per Barnes four-wheel drive instructions, this end of the cast, this will be the driver's side. This end here, all this has to be schwacked off here. And some of this here will have to be ground down. Won't know what until I get this off, until I get the truss actually, the top part of the truss sitting on it, kind of in place. So I'm going to cut this off all the way around because I do have some lower links that's going to be mounted on this back side here. So let's get this off real quick. So I don't have it cut all the way around yet, but I do have a section of it. So I'm gonna try and get it off kind of one section at a time. It's got a Work its way off. Boing! Got one section. A little section here. All right, now I can cut around and get the lower section. More time left. All right. Same thing on this side. Get it cut all the way around. Start working that chisel through there. Got a nice crack going. that both pieces all right so according to Barnes this all you do is line it up with your vent hole in the top and that's where it's supposed to be now I want you to measure from your C's over to the bend both sides I measured from the center of my ball joint over which was 11 and a quarter inches and I did check this side from here to here which it's also 11 and a quarter so where it's sitting right now is where Barnes recommends so I'm gonna get the other pieces put it all up there and then tack the truss together and then pull the truss off and then weld the whole thing up all right so that is what it should look like it is not tacked 
together yet. I just have it put together and sitting there. But there it is. Boom. All right. I got it centered over the vent. I don't. So I don't usually put a truss on this way. But I'm going to trust Barnes. They know what they're talking about. So I'm going to set it up exactly per their instructions. Normally, I set it up kind of kind of parallel with the the diff cover or like the face of the of the diff and I set my caster and all that you know the caster do you know from the from the seas I usually set up about eight or nine degrees caster but Barnes doesn't want me to do it that way so I'm gonna do it the way their instructions say this time hopefully it works out it should like I said they do know what they're talking about so that being said, I'm gonna start getting this thing tacked together. That way I can take it all off and finish welding it. Yeah. All right, so. I've got it tacked all together here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna start welding this whole thing up. But I'm not gonna do it, I'm not gonna start on one end and then work my way over. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna do a little two inch bead and then come over here, do a two inch and then flip it, do a two inch. Kind of rotate it all the way around until it's all welded. That way I don't pull anything or warp anything or you know, that way it doesn't do anything crazy. So, let's get started on it. Let's get going. I'm excited. got a lot of it welded. I don't have it all the way done yet, but I don't want it all the way done yet. I got it about halfway and I brought it back over to the axle to test fit it again. I like to do that two or three times in the welding process. That way I can make sure, you know, check fitment, make sure everything's going to be how it's supposed to be. So, looks good so far I'll uh, finish welding it I'll finish welding it all up tonight and then tomorrow tack the truss in place on the axle I'm not gonna finish weld it to the axle yet not until I get everything from my links and all that stuff and uh, I just don't want to permanently put it on there yet so but I'm gonna finish getting it, getting it welded up and get it tacked on tomorrow. So stay tuned. It's looking pretty good so far. Well, here it is. It's all welded. It's nice and cool now. So now I'm gonna, I'm gonna tack this thing in place. Then I'm gonna slide this whole axle underneath the Jeep to try and figure out about where it's gonna live so I can start measuring for all my links so I can get all my DOM and stuff coming. And then I'm gonna start working on the, the frame stiffeners and all that stuff, get all that done. That way when my, all my, my mounts get here, I can get all those welded in place and get this axle in there a little bit more permanent. I'm sure it'll come out another couple times, three or four times or something, but it's, it'll be one step closer. So, we get this thing tacked up, slid underneath there. I'm only 
going to attack this in a few places, but it should hold. So today is the day I'm going to be finished welding this Barnes four-wheel drive truss to the Dana 60 out of a Ford. Um, I'm going to show you the right way to do it. I got my temperature gun. So when you weld two casts, you have to heat the cast up to somewhere between like 300 degrees and 500 degrees Fahrenheit. So I usually heat it up to right about 350, 400, somewhere in that general area. It usually works out pretty good and once you finish welding the whole thing it is going to be hot so once you finish it you wrap it in a blanket you know a fire resistant blanket you know a welding blanket or something and that way it keeps that heat locked in there and let it just cool down as slow as possible and you shouldn't have any cracking so i'm gonna show you what the what the cast reads right now and then before i start welding on it i'll show you what it reads again okay so, right now, we are reading 62 degrees, 62.7, just about everywhere, 64, 62, somewhere like that. So, we're going to start to heat this up now. Alright, while you're heating all this up, you don't really want to focus all your heat in one spot like this. You want to kind of gradually go over all the cast heat it all up together and normally it does not take very long to do it oh boy let me go ahead and get another reading right now it's already up to about 115 degrees so we'll just keep on loading So, right now, let's see here, we're about 350, right on the money. So, I'll heat this up for just another minute and we'll start welding on it. It's where I need it, temperature wise.
right, we are right at 400. So we'll go ahead and start burning some of this in. So while we're still sitting, right around 400, we'll go ahead and start welding on this stuff. Now there will be some gaps that you got to fill in, but I think it'll be all right. Something else to keep in mind while you're welding these truss in, only go an inch or two bead and then move. Flip to the back side and then to the front side and back over here and over here. That way you're not pulling the truss one way or pulling it the other way or warping it this way or warping it that way. Keep rotating it until you can get it all done. Sun, do a little bit here.
problem. Well, sometimes unfortunate things happen. And you run out of welding pads. So I got part of it done. So I'll still go ahead and wrap it in this blanket here. Cool. It's on the rate of speed. What this welding plank does is it traps all the heat in there. Well, that's not how I wanted to end the video, but it'll still work. So you just keep repeating that process until the whole thing is welded. All the, all the parts to touch. Sometimes you will have like that little quarter inch or even sometimes a 3 8 inch gap. So do the best you can to weld that up. Um, and when you get it done, when you get all the welding done, make sure to wrap it. That way it can cool nice and slow. I'm going to flip this over. Flip that over. And check this out. So it's still reading 200, so it is cooling. Right, so I do have the air conditioner going on in here, so it will probably cool a little bit quicker, but with this blanket on it, it kind of traps the heat in there. So anyway, I'm gonna run to town, get some welding gas, and I'm gonna get some, probably get some PVC so I can mock up my front links once this is finished. We're going to keep going on this project. Still going to be freaking awesome, I do believe. I did finally get some stuff in from Barnes. I got all my, my links and all my Heim joints and all my joints and these joints and those joints. So it's coming together. I'm still, still waiting on the truss for the rear. That should be coming in in the next week or so. Uh, then I'll start. I'm not going to touch the rear until I get the front completely done, I, I think. Or as done as I can. I don't know. It's probably not going to work. But anyway, appreciate you watching. Subscribe to the channel. Like the video. Leave a comment. I really like reading them. And stay tuned for next time. This thing is awesome.